Okay, so if you remember in the previous video we got Falcon working finally. So we achieved the milestone that um, we had a GUI with a GUI browser working all in a very basic desktop system. Um, what I need to do next is to revisit the packages that I've marked down that I need to be rebuilt. Um, purely because uh, there's probably a lot of features missing, lots of functionality missing and quite likely future packages that rely on these ones would likely break as we saw with Falcon and uh, the Qt packages. So by reinstalling them with the recommended packages at the very least and very likely the optional packages as well um, should alleviate any problems like that. I've also been thinking about how Qt and Qt Web Engine work. Um, they've got, as as do some packages, they've got their own copies of other dependence, dependent packages and if they're not found on the system they'll compile their own versions and use those. Well that probably means that those and there are there will be some like that. They've probably been installed within the Qt5 hierarchy under the opt Qt5 link uh, directory. So I'm thinking that maybe what I'll do if it will work is to rename at the right point rename the Qt5 version directory so that the link's not pointing at, the, at that directory and when I come to rebuild Qt and Qt Web Engine um, basically just build them from fresh I'm hoping that um, I'll be able to do that within the graphical environment uh, even though it's in use um, well at least Falcon will be the only application hopefully it will be the only application using Qt at the time I'm hoping that I can open the windows or the tabs uh, that I need prior to that um, to rebuild them and if it does crash then obviously I can go back to links to just install those two packages but I'm hoping that that means that the um, disk space take, taken up by Q, the Qt5 directory will be slightly less because it won't have its own versions of certain dependent packages and more possibly more to the point that there won't be any threat of a conflict with um, the Qt5 having its own version and having a different version within the system uh, just thinking there might be possibility of a uh, conflicts there if it's looking for a library and it it gets the system version but it's expecting its own version things like that um, so I'll think think a little bit more about that when I come to it um, looking through my list there's quite a few packages that need to be rebuilt it's probably at least 20 if not 30 um, so there's quite a lot of work to redo but it's all worth it as I say because of the way um, the system's been built up from scratch and to get to the point where it would be easier to copy and paste commands within the GUI environment with the GUI browser that's the reason why I took these shortcuts and the reason why I had problems last time uh, getting Qt web engine installed I think in particular um, and why I've got to rebuild so many packages. Had I not done that, for example, I would have not done that if I'd been uh, building the machine via an SSH link because uh, I would be using a remote terminals GUI and GUI, uh, GUI based browser to copy and paste commands. It would just have meant that it would have taken longer to get to a certain point. For example, to build Falcon, it would have taken longer because there would have been more dependencies to build. I would have been going through all of the um, recommended dependencies and probably most of the optional dependencies so I would have been concentrating on that sort of uh, those sort of layers that are required in terms of dependencies to to give Falcon all that it needs so because of that um, I'm not really sure where to start building as chances are that I'll pick something and it will just pick up of the other things and other other the other dependencies that need rebuilding plus many more 
other dependencies that I haven't even looked at yet. So what I thought might be the most sensible thing to do, being getting GUI, uh, uh, a GUI web browser, i.e. Falcon, up and running, was the ultimate target to get to this point. I thought it might be best to start with Falcon again and filter down all the dependencies as far as I can go, all the, all the recommended dependencies and uh, maybe a lot of options as well and just take them all in and rebuild them as I approach them and once I've exhausted all those dependencies, once they've all been built, eventually should come back to Falcon and um, that, that would just need a rebuild and then that means the system will be the same as it is now but with many board uh, recommended dependencies and options so it would be a more fully featured system even though the basic tools are the same, um, there should be more features and more stability as well for future packages that need to be um, installed. And then after that point, I can show other um, packages and applications being built. It also means that those packages will require less work because hopefully a lot of the work will be done up front now in getting all the dependencies for Falcon built um, and and the, all the dependencies below that. If you imagine it's like a tree, we've got one package at the top been working to so far, which is Falcon, and then underneath that, like like a spider's web, there's uh, you know several packages under there, and then the third tier down, there's more packages that are required for each of those packages, and so on. It's like a big family tree of packages. Um, so yes, I think that's probably what I'm going to do. So I'll log in okay let's try typing correctly and go into the GUI um, and the first thing I'm going to do is to kick off um, Falcon now um, what I'm going to do is just get another terminal up and start it from there, but I'll have to start it in the background because we've got no menuing system in this TWN window manager. Um, it has to be started from the uh, prompt and I could start it and leave it running, but there's a risk if um, I shut this window down or you know, I accidentally stop it that it will either halt Falcon or it will um, cause it to shut down as well. So what I'm going to do is in this window just run it and put it into the background this process that I'm starting uh, to let it continue running without having to have this window open. Um, yes, now, okay, if you remember there was this problem with starting Falcon again because it's a, a really basic system, it's kind of been cobbled together um, and it's not running properly. And if you remember, I found that there was on the internet that there's a uh, like a hack for this where you can specify a, an environment variable to get it to run. And what I did, I actually created a um, script which I put in user bin. So if I do where is start falcon. So was, uh, that's just a script. If I cat it. You'll see how simple it is. Uh, give it the right path. And you can see it sets that environment variable and then starts Falcon. So it does mean that if I do start Falcon and again put the ampersand afterwards to put it in the background, you see the prompt has returned and the browser has popped up. So it now means that I can get rid of this window. I don't need this window anymore. Okay, it's interesting. It's still it's still running. I didn't expect to see that. So let's see what happens if I kill this now. Yeah, Falcon has stayed up, so that's that's good. Um, yeah, I was going to reduce this down a bit. So let me make this a bit smaller. Um, not bigger either. Right, 
Let me um What I'm gonna do is just reduce the font size slightly. It wasn't in this one, was it? It was in let's see X eleven app defaults, was that it? X in it RC Uh, yeah, it was this one here. Font size 11, so I'll make it 16. And I'll have to come out of this now, unfortunately, so I'll just shut that down. Uh, wrong, wrong mouse. Uh, I'll do Control Q actually. I think if I shut that tab down, it will disappear. So Control Q to quit Falcon. Control D in this window. And I'll restart it. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So I can actually make the window a little bit higher now. Uh, I might actually shrink it down slightly more. So let's make that 15. And the height, let's try 30. Let's try 40. Oops. So I come out again. Yep, that looks good. And it's approximately halfway across the monitor. So, in fact, I don't think there's any reason why I can't do. Yeah, I will do because it didn't shut down properly. Um, so, get another X term up. Uh, actually, what I might do is, this might be why the X term didn't shut down, actually, is because I've started it from script. Uh, right. Right, so uh, what I'll do is I'll put the exclamation, uh, the ampersand there. <clears throat> so what it means is that if I do start Falcon now, I don't need to put the ampersand after it. After it, it should drop back out to the prompt. Uh, which it has done, so if I quit now it should... No, it hasn't. Okay, I don't know why that is. I suspect it's because I'm running it from a a um, shell script, but I can just quit that. It's not a problem. So I'll make this a little bit bigger now. Oops, didn't mean to move it. I'll just grow that to the side. That's better. Right, so I'll find Falcon again. I'm sorry, I seem to be having a bit of a problem typing this morning. So Falcon is the one we're starting with. And all I'm going to do... Oh, actually, I'll keep the contents up. I'll get that in the new window. All I'm going to do is to... Um, let me change the whole, each one of these windows is going to be shrunk, let's set preferences, uh, default zoom on pages, so what's the current zoom? So anyway, let's try 120. Let's see how big that gets. Right, 
that looks quite reasonable. Um, if it does appear too big, I might shrink it down again, but um, it looks quite reasonable at the moment. Okay, so yeah, here's Falcon. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just go through all of the um, links, uh, pick and choose what I'm going to install and what I'm not going to install. Uh, so let's first go to the sources BLFS and hopefully this will help in tracking down what uh, packages are already installed. So the first one is extra C make modules, which you've got. And I do remember installing that twice. I'm actually going to open this up in another browser, in another tab, just to change the color of the link to give me an indication that it could be installed. Qt Web Engine is definitely one that's got to be installed again. Gnome Keyring. Now KDE Frameworks. I imagine that's going to be quite a complex. Uh, installation so it might be one I'll skip for a moment and that one's off the book so I'm not going to be concentrating on that one. Uh, let's look at KDE Frameworks first. Yeah that's got loads and it is part of the KDE build so I might actually just reinstall Falcon after I've done all the updates apart from KDE and then reinstall it again when I've done KDE. Uh, you can see there's lots of work there to do. So I'm going to deliberately leave that for now. Um, Gnome Keyring. So that's got a few dependencies. Um, so Dbus we've got, but I think that's got to be reinstalled. So we could concentrate on that. Um, I'll get these all open. So these two are required. Pam we've got, but that's been installed. Okay, so I'm just going to open that one to change the colour of the link. LibXSLT, I need to check. I don't think we've done OpenSSH yet. And I've got a couple of option one, optional ones here, I guess. GNU PG is something to do with encryption. Uh, looks like the GCR didn't open. Right, okay, so that's all the dependencies for known keyring. So I'm going to go to libxslt now. See if we've got that here. XSLT, no, I haven't. Okay, so that needs lib XML, dot book XML, dot book XSL. Now, open up all these tabs at once, it can get quite confusing, so I might go so far and then stop. Um, let's get this lib G crypt up. Python 2 libxml is dependency is only appropriate if the Python 2 module for this package is needed. It's not needed for any package in BLFS. Right, okay, so it's not needed for BLFS, so I'm not going to install that then. So let's go to libxml. That needs ICU. Right for better Unicode support. Um, have we got this one? Excellent. Right, we've installed this, so I need to start checking. Just cross checking might be easier. So, in my list, um, yeah, that's that's complete libxml. We don't need to install that again. Then we've got dot book which is under chapter 49. I'm feeling we haven't done this one. No, so that needs installing. This job common. 
and unzip. And this is where it starts to get a bit complicated. So I think uh, let's have a look at these. That's your common. That hasn't got any dependencies. So I've reached the bottom of the tree there. And unzip's the same. So what I might do is this is for libxsl2, isn't it? XML. All oh, right, it's for dot put ultimately. Right. Okay. So I'm going to start with unzip because that will take us back to unzip and SGML at the end of the dependency tree for docbook XML and docbook XML is a requirement for libxsl2 and so on. So I'll start with this one, which is chapter 12. Yeah, we've done, oh, actually we've done unzip as well by the looks of it. Let's just check. I can see it here. Yep, there it is there. Okay, so that can go straight away. That's good. Now I've got to go back to SGML common, which is chapter 48. I don't think there's any in that chapter that's done, or that section. Yeah, chapter 48. All to do with um, markup languages. So this will be the one I'll start off with. So I'm going to right click that, save link as. And I want to go into. Uh, I'll operate this. Click on that. Into root, then sources, and then BLFS. And then save that file there. There's a patch to put in. And that should be it. So let's extract it. And start the installation. There's no information about the configuration, so we're just straightforward copy and paste. You can see straight away how easy this is now to see what needs to be copied and pasted um, because we've got the highlighting with the boxes and the lines around the commands uh, so it's much easier to see what's going on and we install it with these commands or rather build it that's done and now as the root user just copy these commands That's done. Update hint. Remove the above catalog items prior to upgrading. So we haven't upgraded, we've just done an installation. So that package is complete. SGML common. So I'll cross that off. It's complete in the list and shut down the tab and then we can go back to docbook xml we've got all the requirements there's no further recommended or optional packages so let's download the package okay so this is a zip so always be wary of zips yeah, it says here you should create a directory and change into that before unzipping. Okay. So let's call it. What is this? Dotbook XML. So I'll call it DBXML. And then we can do unzip. Dotbook XML. And you can see there's no top level directory created there, the files have just been created as it, as it says. So as the root user, we do all the installation. Right, I think I've got a problem with my keyboard here, it seems to be missing characters sometimes, it's not me, I thought it was me. 
So become root and install these commands here. And then it says create or update and populate the etc XML dot book catalog file by running the following commands as the root user. So we'll just copy all of this in. Don't worry that it sort of kind of messes up on the console. It does paste it incorrectly. So this was the etc xml docbook catalog file um, okay it's the same file xml catalog but it's I presume just more updates looks of it so I'm not sure why uh, these aren't all part of the same uh, commands to copy and paste but do that as well and then we've got some configuration various packages request docbook xml dtd version 4.x before v4.5 so the following step must be done for these packages to be built successfully and explains there so we'll need to do this copy that in, paste and that's done so that's docbook xml 4.5 installed so let's mark that one up now that's chapter 49 docbook xml 4.5 and I'll close that tab down so that should bring us back to libxslt now so we've done this one, we've got to do docbook xsl next. Let's take a look at this. It needs libxml2 at runtime. And then optional, all used at runtime. So Pashyant needs Java. And Java needs uh, X11 plus uh, quite a few other libraries. So uh, let's look at that in a private window. Hold up the JDK. Uh, actually, I wonder if we could. Um, cheat a little here it needs so you can install java binary and you need that to install the source and literally you're just expanding an archive and installing it um, so although it says they're runtime dependent well they are runtime dependencies you don't need them as at the time you install this we could install this and attempt to install Apache Ant and there's glib which we've got albeit it needs to be installed again um, So this might be worth doing and then that, that runtime dependence is complete for um, this complete for this doc book and help documents I presume they're help documents in the form of HTML uh, libxslt is what we're going to be building we've got Python 2 now do you see pub style sheets? Uh, let's have a quick look at this. Uh, by opening them in private tabs, I'm ensuring that the links don't change colour. So, that's the only reason why I'm opening them in private tabs here. 
I've got some optional dependencies. Um, I don't normally install Ruby, so I might just ignore that anyway. I don't don't use it myself. Um, so yes, I think I'll have a go at this. We've got zip installed. That's already been marked off my list. Um, yeah, so I'll open this in a new tab and close it. Just to change the link color. Python we've already done as well. Um, so yeah, it's really just Apache Ant. I'm going to chance this. It might not work. Um, if it doesn't, then we'll have to come and install it another time. Uh, so we've got glib. I'm going to just go for the installation of the Java binary for now. Um, and then when I come to install the JDK, which has a lot, lot more requirements, um, at least we'll have some, some of it completed.